here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In the previous videos, I've talked about how I can't wait to add fish to my new Red Sea tank. And in the last series of videos, I took you on a tour of ORA and showed you around um, some of their brood stock and their coral farm. And we even in the last episode, walked you through what it's like to pack up a box and get it ready to ship out to the consumer. Well, in this video, I am the consumer and this is a box of fish from ORA. Now, a little bit of background on this one. Probably a week ago, I got my order together and sent it to Donna, who asked me a couple of questions about the existing fish that these new guys are gonna be with and what specifically I was looking for, as well as asking when I wanted it to be delivered. Now, since I had a little bit of traveling to do, I knew today is specifically the day that I would be home and I would have time to get my fish acclimated to their new system. So. Let's go ahead and unbox this. Now I know it might look like the box is already open, but I just popped this so it was easier to uh, get things out. Now, while I'm opening this, I did wanna say, with ORA fish, you don't have to quarantine them. Um, I'm a little bit of the mindset, I always am gonna quarantine my fish before I put them in my display tank, and you don't have to do that, that's just my personal preference. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these guys ready. So this is my old reef tank, this is gonna be the quarantine. Um, it's up and running and cycled and ready. I'm so excited. <laughs> Now in the video at ORA when we were talking about packing, um, Jordan showed us how there's usually a heat pack on here, especially um, for Washington, which is where I live. It gets a little bit cold. Now this video um, is filmed towards the end of summer, so we didn't need a heat pack in here because it's still kind of warm, like 75, 80, so we're good on that. All right, we got our air cushions. <laughs> the moment of truth. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, I see a clown. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hey, buddy. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. There's no other fish in this system. So I'm gonna take the lid off and we're gonna go ahead and float these fish and get them temperature acclimated. Now, I am gonna leave this light off. You probably saw it turn off while I was filming and I don't need to super stress these fish out. They've gone through enough and having bright lights um, shined on them immediately is probably not the healthiest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a fish. Okay. While my fish are getting temperature acclimated to their new tank, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I got. First off is the white spotted file fish. I've wanted one of these guys for a while. I've seen the tasseled file fish, but they're not reef safe. And since I'm gonna have a reef tank and even the Aptasia file fish are known to eat corals, the white spotted file fish is one of the file fish that is least likely to pick at corals. So went ahead and got one of those. I gotta say I was a little bit influenced on that one by uh, caffeinated reefer Andrea and Shaker Breakers Reef Bruce who have five fish in their tanks and their personalities just look like they're so much fun so I'm excited to watch this little one grow up and watch its personality. Now the next fish I got was a clownfish. Obviously ORA is known for clownfish so kind of couldn't go without getting one of those. Now in my previous videos about the fish that I have in this Red Sea tank, one of them is a Picasso clown that I've had almost since the very beginning. Now, um, a couple years back, it lost its mate, so it's kind of lonely in there and I wanted to get it a friend. Only thing is, I really didn't care for some of the standard color patterns, but I really, really liked the look of some of the storms. And I talked to Donna, asked what she recommended, and she was saying, hey, we have these fish that kind of have some of the similar patterns and the color that you like. It's called a hybrid storm. So it is a mix between a Percula and a Ocellaris. Now, some people say, no, you can't mix the two species, but Donna mentioned that because it has a lot more of the Percula traits that I should be okay putting it in there with my Picasso. Now, Donna's not the only one that I talked to. I actually talked to um, a clown fish breeder and another person in Europe who's had a lot 
of experience with clownfish and said that they have um, seen the different species pair up and not have too much of an issue. So I can't wait to see how they get along. I gotta say the colors and the patterns on this one is just more than I could have ever hoped for. So thank you to Donna and Jordan and the whole team at ORA for picking out such a spectacular fish. I couldn't have picked a better one myself. Now, that wasn't the only thing that was in this package. I also got a Meteor Shower Sephastria. Now, I've had a Meteor Shower Sephastria in my old reef tank. I really love it. I like the bright, vibrant colors of them. Um, unfortunately, it didn't make the move, so this is my first coral replacement from that old tank. And I can't wait to get it in the new one and watch it grow and encrust and add some of its colors to the tank. Now this is just the first round of fish and coral that I've been adding. I don't want to go too crazy and just like rapidly increase my bio load. I kind of want to slowly add fish, making sure that they're all going to get along together and it's all going to be compatible, but I don't want to do it necessarily all at once. I'm going to take a break for probably two weeks and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going to show you putting the fish into their new home. So stay tuned. Okay, as promised, it is two weeks since I added the fish to my quarantine take. They're doing good and looking fine. I'm gonna go ahead and move the clownfish into my main Red Sea display. Now, the file fish is gonna stay in quarantine for a while. Not that there's anything wrong with him, but he's a little bit small and I've only seen him eat for sure once. I know he's eaten at other stuff because I've seen him kind of looking like he's picking and I've watched his mouth move, but I want to watch him eat a couple of other times. Because he's so small, I don't want him to get lost and miss eating in the main display, so I want to see more of that feeding behavior before I put him in here. Now, I'm up pretty early. I've got my coffee. I'm going to go ahead and get the clownfish into its acclimation box before the lights come on so that it can kind of wake up with the rest of the tank. Now, I mentioned acclimation box. Um, this is something I would recommend if you're adding new fish because I've got a clownfish already in here that's very well established. I've talked about him before. Um, I want to put him, the new clown, in the acclimation box just so I can kind of watch and observe his behavior over the next few days. I don't want anybody getting beat up um, and kind of want them to get a chance to meet each other. So enough of this. Let's go move the fish. Okay, I've got my acclimation box situated. I've got a power head right here, so it's gonna be pushing water so it'll flow in here so the clown will have good um, water flow and have enough oxygen in here. I want it where it's easy for me to see, um, but I really don't want it blocking the front of the tank. Um, I highly recommend you get one of these in advance. I forgot that I needed to get one, and so I rushed to purchase one off of Amazon. I've seen better models at trade shows, but this is what I'm working with because I was on a time constraint, so. Let's get the fish in there. Okay, that is going to conclude this video. I want to get all these lights off and give the, this uh, clownfish a chance to get acclimated and then wake up with the rest of the tank. Now, don't worry, I'll be sure to include you as I'm adding the file fish into the tank and as I'm adding more corals into the tank. Fapalooza Dallas is coming up. I'm super excited and I'm hoping to get some corals then so I can start adding lots of corals to this tank. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I will see you next time. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.